Hello and welcome to the Guna Tour. Back again with you guys for another episode of what is the Arsenal Transfer Show. Joining you every morning at 8 a.m. UK time. Apologies for the slight late start. I had to do a mic check uh, with Owen in the background because we'd had some issues this morning. Uh, I'm going to be using a different laptop um, on the next show because this is, yeah, for some reason the, the problem's returned. It's We survived for quite some time. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, frustratingly, it seems that we've gone back to some of the old gremlins in the system but i'm hoping that you can hear me loud and clear uh, i'm also not in the usual environment i was doing babysitting duties last night and uh, we're now staying house sitting at the in-laws so uh yeah that's why the uh the atmosphere is a little bit different i hope the audio is okay it's a bigger room so it might be a little bit more echoey um than it usually is but uh, hopefully you can hear me absolutely fine um so that's lovely stuff right let's jump in today's episode shall we and go through today's first stories we'll go into part two and your questions right after this so we start with Arsenal's youth side winning 4-0 against Leicester in the under 18s Premier League Obi Martin you might remember him he got 10 plus goals uh, against Liverpool for Arsenal's under 16s I think it was in a major major win well he actually came off the bench again to score uh, in the 4-0 win Camera and Roziak with the other goals on the day as well Arsenal have had something of a frustration about their lack if you like of um of attacking options and because of that uh we've not really been able to promote a striker from the youth academy but obi martin seems he seems at least to be in a position whereby um we're not necessarily going to be too uh far away from the drought ending maybe of a young striker not to put too much pressure on his shoulders but his name is getting talked about a hell of a lot. Uh, Nuno Tavares, however, is a player that is causing some concern because once again, he played for Nottingham Forest in a FA Cup game. They drew 0-0 away at Bristol City, meaning they'll have another FA Cup replay, more games for Forest to try and navigate. Um, but Nuno Tavares started and came off for Harry Toffolo in this game. And uh, if you read the tweets in response to the substitution, you will see quite the criticism of Arsenal's on loan player. Now, the situation remains quite fluid with Nuno Tavares, of course, because we know that only two players can be signed on or registered on loan at one time. You can only sign four players across a season on loan. And with Nottingham Forest interested in bringing in a couple of more players on loan before the end of the window, um, Arsenal would be hoping to, to move the player on. However, that said, Marseille, who are the team or Arsenal are, of course, trying to, to negotiate with, trying to, to look at, they sadly have, I think, now looked to bring in a potential um, alternative, uh, which is a very big frustration, of course, for, uh, for Arsenal. They've signed uh, Ulysses Garcia. Um, he is a left-back they've signed from Young Boys, um, the Swiss club, but... Uh, yeah, it's, it seems as though if that is indeed the player that they've brought in, it that might scupper any chances of Nuno Tavares joining another club during this window on what could have been a permanent deal. But that is a now a very, very complicated situation for Arsenal to try and navigate. Meanwhile, in potential incomings, Al Itahad striker Karim Benzema is still not likely to leave. This shine has gone way up and now way down. Uh, it seems all of those reports we heard at the start of the window certainly seem to have some fabrication towards them. Uh, L'Equipe uh, have reported that he will not be leaving the Saudi Arabian side this month. And of course, we've heard from quotes from Karim Benzema that stories about him wanting to go have been somewhat fabricated. So yeah, uh, it's very, very, very chaotic with this Benzema story. And it has been something of a drama that seems to be coming to an end with no solution regarding an outgoing. And, and that appears to have been the case all the way through this story. But we've kept you up to date with it. We've kept you up to date with every story that's been reported around it. But it just seems to be one kind of mess after another with Karim Benzema. But our main story that we need to discuss in what is on a Sunday show tends to be quite quiet in terms of news is that according to Sasha Tavalieri, the Belgian uh, reporter, Victor Ozymen favours a move to Chelsea um, over Arsenal or any other club, it seems. Chelsea and Arsenal were the two names being mentioned in the in the conversations, of course, for uh, for the uh, the striker position uh, and for the clubs that would be interested in signing Victor Ozymen. But uh, it seems now that the Nigerian 
centre forward if indeed these reports are accurate and Sasha has some very good connections uh, that Chelsea would be the team that he favours. It's a strange one, um, a very, very strange one uh, to see potentially a player like Ozymen move and choose to move, I suppose, what's considered a bit of a downstep. Napoli in the Champions League this season, of course, would be dropping into a team that wouldn't be in the Champions League next season. Arsenal, of course, looking far more competitive than Chelsea in 2024. Uh, it depends upon, of course, the the price tag that's involved in any potential deal. His release clause is upwards of £100 million. So it'd be very, very difficult for Arsenal to do this deal. Um, but at the same time, Arsenal need to find themselves a top, top striker. And Ozzyman is one of the few in the bracket of centre-forwards that Arsenal would be able to potentially move for, even if it does mean costing them an arm and a leg in the summer. But that is all of today's stories. It's a quick one. We're going to move to part two in your questions. But first, please do let me remind you about the competition that continues to go on. There is 131 tickets left in the chances to win UK only competition signed and framed Dennis Bergkamp shirt with a built in LED TV, which plays you highlights of the man himself throughout his time at Arsenal. Of course, there's lots of instant win prizes as well. If you haven't already been able to get your hands on some of them, including a Declan Rice signed uh, Arsenal home shirt, a Zinchenko signed Arsenal home shirt, a Smith Rowe custom framed Arsenal shirt signed as well, a Bamiang signed and custom framed Arsenal shirt, also a Vieira signed photograph, a Vieira, uh, a Partey signed photograph, and a Dixon Adams bold and Nigel Winterburn signed photograph, as well as lots of plenty of other instant win vouchers for you to get involved with. Also, lovely stuff. Right, let's move to part two and your questions and maybe an appearance from one of our chat box trolls right after this. Right then, let's tackle your questions in part two. Now, at the start of the show, of course, I like to jump into the chat box. So let's see what the conversation's going on, see what kind of things are being had. And we've had we've had Jason in here saying that, you know, Edu's doing a terrible job. I've said I'd be more than willing to host to Jason and have a chat, but so far he's not been very, very responsive in regards to uh, providing the ability to come on the show. I'll be able to send you a link on your socials, Jason, but sadly he's not provided that ability to do so yet, which is a shame, which means I think... You're going to be disappointed, but you're not going to be disappointed with the fantastic questions uh, that we've got to be answered from the chat box as well. <laughs> First one from Pika Who, Tom, will Jason ever appear on the phone and show? I'm not too confident, but I guess we can always keep those fingers crossed that it might happen. Uh, Granddaddy Guna Paul says, did you see that Mika Beereth scored on his debut? Um, I, I did. Uh, it was a very instinctive finish, actually. He was in a good position, fantastic movement as well into the box before finally finishing off his chance on his debut and really impressing. He's an interesting player. He's obviously a young guy. He's still got a lot of development still to do, but could, of course, become a very, very important player for whoever he signs for in those kind of divisions. But will he be able to take that step up to Arsenal in the future? That is the question. At the moment, we don't know the answer to. Um, Lee says, Tom, once again, uh, we have players on our books that nobody wants. How does this keep happening? Contract termination seems to be the only alternative. Lee, the, I mean, the answer to your question is because, of course, these players are very difficult to move on. Cedric, of course, being a key one, there is supposedly interest from Turkey, but you've got to obviously negotiate the deals for those players as well. And if you terminate their contracts, you've got to come to a financial agreement with those players. Arsenal would, of course, prefer to move those players on um, and move those players to clubs where they don't then have to pay the hundreds of thousands of pounds that it would take to cancel that potential contract. Uh, Cedric is on, I think, between 70 and 75,000 pounds per week. And so across the course of you know, the next 26 weeks, that all adds up. So you don't want to have to be able to terminate that deal. You want to try and find a destination for Cedric between now and and the end of the window. Uh, Rob says, re Ozzyman to Chelsea. It's got to be something to do with the wages. Is this something that we need to be beware, uh, be, uh, beware of uh, when attracting big signings, destroying our wage structure and the vibe of the dressing room? Of course, the, the wage structure is something that is important to Arsenal. It's something that has changed dramatically over the course of, of course, this window um, and previous windows as well, as we've re renewed players like Saka, renewed players like Saliba, we're renewing Ben White, we're renewing Tommy Asu, we've renewed, we've signed players like Declan Rice and put them on big wages. Partey, of course, on a really big wage. Jesus on a big wage too. Zinchenko's on a decent amount of money also. So, yes, of course, these players are 
in a position whereby, um, you know, uh, they are getting good wages and they're in a structure of a club that want to pay big wages, but we still can't necessarily compete with Chelsea's wages in some senses, Manchester United's wages in some senses, Manchester City's, Real Madrid's, even Bayern Munich to some degree. We haven't yet got a player um, that would be worth paying, you know, that amount of money when we don't need to. We ultimately have been really good with how we've structured our wages at the top end. It's at the bottom end, we've still not got to kind of shave off some of the, the higher earning players that aren't necessarily getting the minutes. But you look at Fabio Vieira, we've got him on a very good way, despite the fact, of course, that there's still question marks about his future, but he's not earning loads and loads and loads and loads of money. So we can afford that. Kai Havertz, of course, we've signed as a bit of a risk. That's a big concern that we've still got over the course of this season. And we'll have a talk about that at the summer and see what kind of impact is made between now and May. But we need to make the right choices when it comes to players and wages. And some clubs are at the moment still going to be offering a lot more than we can. And perhaps that is one of the reasons why Victor Ozymen may move to Chelsea over Arsenal. Um, Dylan says, Tom, is there any way to watch the Arsenal women's team? It just seems a bit difficult to find games and give them more support. Love the show. Keep it up. Thank you, Dylan. The answer to your question, I think you've answered it yourself. It is difficult sometimes to watch the Arsenal women's games. Unless they're being shown on Sky or the BBC in certain situations, it can be really difficult. But if you're based here in and near London, of course, you can get tickets and to go to the games. You can travel and watch the games away from home. But I know for fans abroad that want to watch the women's game, that's very, very difficult. And of course, if you don't have the time to be able to commit to spending that time going and watching the team and you want to be able to watch the games uh, on TV, it's not always possible. So sadly, there's no official way that I can give you the opportunity to uh, to watch more of them. Hopefully it gets more uh, publicity, more, of course, because if it gets more coverage, Arsenal will get more money as well. It's worth remembering that the more publicity the women's game gets, the bigger it grows. The broadcasting side of things will benefit all the clubs that are involved in those as well. We've seen Chelsea recently break the women's records uh, in transfers. They brought in, um, I think it was £450,000 that was spent to break the record. And it won't be long before I think we see um, we see kind of million pound um, transfer fees for in the women's game in the next few years. I can imagine that happening. Um, let's go to, uh, Owen says with Klopp moving on, arguably the most loved man in football. Do we as a fan base need to be careful with how much pressure we place on our managers? These guys are just human and we need to remember that. Um, I've got, I've got to say it's, it's interesting. I think it depends on the person. Klopp is a very, very enthusiastic. He talks about energy. Energy is all part of his management style. And after doing what he's done at Liverpool for so many years in a row, I can understand and empathise why he might want to take something of a sabbatical. Even Pep Guardiola took that break, of course, between clubs, between joining um, Bayern Munich and I think between joining Manchester City. Managers do need breaks. It, it's a really taxing job. Um, and so even the best in the world, absolutely, um, best manager in the world need to take these breaks. So they are human. I think it is a case-by-case -case basis. But um, yeah, I think we do need to be somewhat uh, empathetic to those situations. Um, I'm just checking the chat. It seems as though, yeah, it, seem, it seems as though Jason's not showing up. That's a real shame. All mouth and no show, it turns out. Ah, typical. Another one bites the dust, people. We thought we were getting lucky today. Uh, Bizarre says, what is the attraction from players wanting Chelsea? Uh, is it because Chelsea are willing to pay big fees? And the answer, I think you've answered it yourself, Bizarre. Yes, it is. It is indeed at the moment because of that money. There is obviously something to be said about Chelsea's modern history of winning Champions Leagues and, and things like that. But if you look at them in the most recent form, there's a lot of question marks about them as well. Um, Maximir says Nigeria has such a huge Arsenal fan base, yet we're giving up on Ozymen fight so easily. Even Rice is a Chelsea fan, yet he came to us eventually. Where's the evidence that we're giving up on the Ozymen fight so easily, Maximir? So I'm just curious. I've not personally seen any reports suggesting Arsenal have left the race um, for Ozymen or still aren't interested. All we've heard today is there's a report saying that apparently he favours Chelsea. There's been no bid. There's been no agreement with him. So I'm interested in where you've got the perception of that we're giving up on Ozymen easily just from what we've heard today. But yeah, do let me know. Um, Ronald says, would you sign Jorginho on a one-year deal if we get Zubamendi 
uh, we need another position in the striker at the back as well. I, I would be open to renewing with Jorginho for another season and signing a player like Zubamendi. Of course, moving El Nenny on in the summer is something that's inevitable. That's going to happen. So Jorginho kind of fills that spot. And then you would have Partey, Rice, Zubamendi and Jorginho as potential options in the midfield moving forwards. If Partey stays, of course, he could still move on. And in which case, we might need another midfielder. I guess we will have to wait and see. Uh, Alvin Rod says, I'm really struggling with weekends without football. Any suggestions to combat the withdrawal? I've already watched the Invincibles DVD <laughs> twice. Look, of course, I always tell people there is more to life than just football. But if you want to whet your Arsenal appetite, of course, uh, in the uh, WSL today, Liverpool will be taking on Arsenal uh, at 4.30, I think. And it is on Sky, so you can watch that. So Liverpool versus Arsenal in the WSL this afternoon, 4.30. And it is on Sky. So make sure you go and check that one out if you want to watch some Arsenal-related football. Uh, Owen says, or you can go and play golf. It's still a little cold for me. I've not played golf in quite a while. I've got a, I've got a round at the start of February booked. But yeah, I haven't been able to get out on the courses over the winter. I think I played in November was the last time. And I just thought, yeah, we're going to hang up our, our clubs for a, a couple of months before it starts to warm up a little bit more. Um... Let's go to Omar says, did you feel as good at 22 as I'm feeling at 22 today? Omar, um, good to see you back in the chat, my friend. Well, that was seven years ago for me. So do I feel as good? Did I feel as good at 22? I'd just finished uni. I'd finished three years of quite ridiculous amount of, of uni nights out and uh, going into teaching at that time. So I guess I guess I was pretty nostalgic about finishing university. I still miss it now. It's definitely three of the best years of my life, but uh, it's not too bad being 22. There's a lot of older listeners, I'm sure, listening right now that probably wishing and cursing that they're thinking back to the age of being 22. Uh, Bizarre says, why does Arsenal struggle with wages and transfer fees? Is it because we struggle in offloading players to make money? Because it seems like our players leave on freeze. Of course, plenty of players have left on freeze over the course of the last few years because since Edu and Arteta have come in, they inherited a squad that was pretty fractured and full of players that needed to be moved on and players that sadly there wasn't too much in the way of interest in. In terms of struggling with wages, we don't tend to struggle too much with wages. We just can't offer and don't offer the same level of wages as some of the other huge teams in the world because we've not necessarily needed to. Um, our wage um, structure has been very good to us. It's enabled us to spend bigger transfer fees because we don't spend as much on wages. And we've been able to compete in the title last season and aiming to do that again this season. And still, despite the fact that we can't pay the big, big, big wages that some of the hyper clubs around can at the moment. And uh, Omar says, to be fair, it's going to be a quiet birthday. It's just what the dots would do. Well, happy birthday, Omar. And I hope you're having a fantastic day, my friend. Uh, Vegas Gunner, thank you so much for the kind donation. Why did we extend Ramsdale, Tierney and Reese's contracts? Arteta doesn't want Tierney anymore and barely plays Reese. And Ramsdale is the second choice goalkeeper. This is actually quite a simple answer. And it's an answer which falls in line with a lot of what the critics have been shouting at Arsenal for a long time. Is of why are we so bad at selling? And one of the reasons we've been so bad selling is because some of the most sellable assets that we've had at the club tend to run their contracts down and Arsenal wanted to be in a situation where they're not seeing those contracts run down we've managed to improve their value by extending their deals so for instance Kieran Tini will return in the summer with two years left on his deal yes he's had injury issues yes of course he's been struggling for that game time at, uh, at Real Sociedad, but there is still value to him. And had we have not extended that deal, we'd probably be losing Kieran Tierney on a free this summer, which wouldn't be very good. Reese Nelson is the same. There will be interest in Reese Nelson, I think, going forwards. And now with him being on a long-term deal, Arsenal will be able to make pure profit from Reese Nelson. We also didn't have the financial freedom to go into the market and sign another winger. And so it's far, far cheaper for Arsenal to go out and renew Reese's contract, have him as a depth player in the squad. And then, of course, you've got somebody like Ramsdale, who we've signed on to a new deal. And taxfully and perhaps strategically, we've then signed him and then signed another goalkeeper who could replace him. So if we ever were to lose Aaron Ramsdale, his long-term contract means that any club that wants to buy him would have to, of course, pay a significant transfer fee. I still think after a year, even of playing little football, we should be looking to get a profit on Aaron Ramsdale. We signed him for about 24 million plus add-ons up to about £30 million. So we need to be looking to try and make a profit on Aaron Ramsdale. And that's why we signed those players up to new contracts. 
Um, Ronald says, would you sign Frimpong? Would he be more of a winger than a fullback? Um, I would absolutely sign Frimpong. He's a fantastic player and have talked about him since he was at Celtic. And of course, even before that, he was at Manchester City's Youth Academy and they must be so frustrated they let him go because he's become one of the best fullback and wingbacks in the world. So yes, I would indeed be uh, be very keen to see Arsenal go after him. Um, Anur says, TC, do you think the departure of Jurgen Klopp will favour Arsenal in any way. I think there is scope for it to favour Arsenal because Liverpool, of course, are losing an amazing manager. They're losing a, uh, a coach that has been there for a really extended period of time. And it takes clubs time to adjust to losing those. Players, of course, have got to then readjust to a manager that didn't sign them. They've got to readjust to playing a different type of system under a different coach. And anyway, he is an amazing manager. So, yes, of course, I think Arsenal are set to benefit from Jurgen Klopp moving on. But it depends on who they bring in. If they bring in another very, very good coach, we might not feel that drop off as much as maybe if it was somebody else being brought in. Xabi Alonso is my favourite to take over there. I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen at all. And he's doing a fantastic job at Bayer Leverkusen as well. Um, let's have a look. Uh <laughs> Jimbo says Tom Jason would loan out Gunnosaurus to Jurassic Park for 50 million. I mean, get that man a job. Get that man in the door if he can sort that out, please. Um, <laughs> everyone's keen for that question to be asked. It's uh, yeah, I mean, you've got to do the job, Jason. You've got to get it done, Matt, my friend. You've got to get it done. Hopefully, he's more efficient at getting deals done than he is at letting us contact him to give him the opportunity to come on the show. For the records, like right at the beginning of the show, it was a case of yeah. I'll come on the show and tell you why Edu's not good at doing a good job. And it's not happened. It's not happened, which is, you know, I guess very, very frustrating and a bit revealing. We always open up the floor. We open up the show for critics to come on and have their say as long as they're respectful. But, uh, yeah, it seems, seems that's not going to happen. Um, Omar says, what do you think about Xavi's decision to leave Barcelona? I think it was ultimately a little bit, inevitable there was always going to be this expectation around Xavi that he had to emulate Pep Guardiola but the fact of the matter is that Barcelona are no longer in the state that they were when Pep Guardiola was at Barca and that's to do with the fact that Pep left it's to do with the fact that they faced financial struggles over the last few years because of chaotic presidential messes basically um and I'm not surprised that he wants to move and, and face a fresh challenge expect plenty of links with Arteta of course Arteta is a former Barcelona player, um, I would imagine he's going to be linked with a move to Barca and has also opened up before about wanting to manage in La Liga one day. But I don't think there will be that much of a keenness from Arteta to do it yet. I think Arteta will eventually manage in La Liga. Um, but I don't think that it's uh I don't think that it's gonna happen um during the next year or so, or even a couple of years. I think Arteta will sign a new deal. And we will move forward with Arteta as our, as our manager. Alex says, Tom, I'm disappointed with the advancement slash betterment of our squad building and management. We have bought a number of prospects at high cost and wages with little margin to sell on for meaningful profit. Um, I mean, if we have a look at the players that Arsenal have signed over the last few years, I think actually what we've done is when we do sign players, they've tended to increase in value. Some haven't. Sure. Um, and you've got to remember there's a, there's a few. There is no intention to to sell those players either. Um, why is this being really frustrating? Transfer mark's not working for me today, apparently. Um, but if you look at Tommy Asu, he's definitely, definitely increased in value, has Tommy Asu. Um, if you look at somebody like uh, Aaron Ramsdale, 100% has increased in value and will definitely be selling him for a profit when eventually he does move on. Um, if you look at, let's scroll back a little bit more. I mean, Erdegaard, Ben White, uh, I've already mentioned Tommy Asu. They've all increased in in that side. I think the difference is, Alex, at the moment, Arsenal's first step, Arsenal's first step has ultimately been the position whereby you can, um, you know, you can be in a position where you can bring in players that are meant to improve the squad. You can bring in players that are meant to be improving the 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 first 11. And that's not tending to be recruitment that's designed to then be sold on for profit. So once Arsenal stabilise their squad, they're not going to be bringing in players to sell on, really. I think after next season, 
after next summer, we might then ultimately see it. Um, but uh, we might see that ability to do it. Um, but yeah, I don't think we're going to for another year, maybe two, uh, before we start seeing kind of a turnover of, uh, of profit for players. I think that might be a little bit more. Um, let's go to Aaron says, with regards to Edu, I think incomings, 8 out of 10, outgoings probably aren't much more than a 5 out of 10, needs to get better. Um, but that uh, is doing still a good job. And I would tend to agree. I think outgoings, we absolutely need Aaron to improve. Incomings have been very good, hence why he's won the award that he won last year. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly without that ability to to bring in the players that we, to, to you know, sell the players that we need to sell, we are still lacking that. Um, we're going to go for about 10 more minutes unless Jason, of course, wants to make an appearance. Jason, I'm going to give you a massive favour by just chucking the StreamYard link into the chat box if you'd like it. Uh, that is an invite just for Jason, by the way. So um, don't click it unless you're Jason, basically. But the link's right there for you, Jason, to click. So I look forward to speaking to you very, very soon, I'm sure, because now you've got the link to, to join in the chat box. Happy to just chuck it in there. Um Tulip says, if not Ozymen, which striker do you think is that striker on whom that we can spend in excess of 70 million if demanding that amount of money? It's a good question. And that is ultimately the golden question, isn't it, Tulip, is talking about specifically why um, we're finding uh, a striker that's going to be on the level of Ozymen. I don't think we can find that unless it's going to be, you know, a striker that's a younger option that's going to develop into that player. I guess we'll have to wait and see if that turns out to be the case. First, I just wanted to say it's my birthday, Tom, but doing the usual morning workout by listening to my favourite Arsenal YouTube channel. Keep up the great work. Uh, thanks, Fuad, for that. And happy birthday to you. I hope you have a fantastic day, my friends. Enjoy it. It's Sunday, so hopefully you've got a day off. Uh, I don't. I'm working today. But uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy your Sunday birthday. Uh, Dano says, Tom, it's Xerxes. Uh, Dano reckons it's going to be Xerxes that is uh, the, uh, the guy that replaces... Ozymen in the standing. Uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see if it turns out to be Ozymen uh, that comes in. I don't think it will be, but Xerxes, can he be as good as Victor Ozymen? I'm not sure that he can. I'm not sure that he can. I don't think that he is of that level yet. I haven't seen enough to suggest that he's going to be of that level yet, but um, yeah, I, I don't think that Xerxes will reach that level. I could be wrong. But for the moment, yeah, I can't see it. I can't see it happening. Brian says, do you think Pep will jump ship uh, before the EPL hand out the punishment for him cheating? Um, I mean, it's an allegation for starters, so we don't know. We need to try and find out first whether or not... Um, we need to find out whether or not the... Uh, what's the word? Um, the allegations, of course, lean into something or not. So let's wait and see if indeed we find a position where... Um, <laughs> where they are found guilty. We don't know if they will. Um, we have to we have to kind of talk and dance around the subject somewhat because of legalities. But the allegations that we find ourselves in um, and looking at, we don't know how it's going to work. And, and his contract runs out, I think, at a time in which those allegations are probably going to come to the fore. I think his deal runs out in 2025. And that's when we're expecting to hear kind of a verdict upon those allegations so it could be um that that all falls into place rather miraculously but yeah i guess we're gonna have to wait and see uh, maximius says, tom speaking of strikers why don't we go for the inter striker lataro martinez he's 26 perfect age and has done well consistently and will not cost more than tony and the answer to your question is because he is not leaving Inter Milan. He has said he's not leaving Inter Milan and he's going to be signing a brand new contract at Inter Milan if he hasn't done already. Um, I'd, I've said Lataro Martinez, I agree with you, Maximius, that he'd be someone I'd be interested in Arsenal signing. There is also something to be said about the fact that he usually plays in a two-striker system other than when he plays for Argentina. But for the moment, um, yeah, we haven't seen that. By the way, just, just a heads up, Jason popped up down below where you can see if you've ever been on StreamYard and disappeared almost immediately. Don't know why, but uh, he did jump in, but then very quickly scampered away. <laughs> so I don't, I'm assuming that's still a, oh my God, it worked. The link worked. Oh no, I've got to do it. Oh no, I, I can't do it. Um, but yeah, that was quite funny actually. Um, Bizarre says, what are the likeliness that Man City will actually get found guilty? No idea, mate. Absolutely no idea. We'll have to wait for the investigation to carry on and those allegations to be assessed um rob says don't tell tom but i'm quickly going to make a new youtube profile guess what it's going to be called clue it rhymes with mason <laughs> oh could you imagine 
could you imagine uh it would be i remember the time we had i think it was ghost bella tuned in with a mask on and i was like mate it's not happening <laughs> a you've got to be over the age of 18 b i need to check that to the best of my ability so you can't have a mask on it's just like i don't get it it's so easy to just spout what you want to spout in a chat box when it comes to actually jumping on a show and having your views spoken about very very different very very different indeed jonah says tom what are your predictions against liverpool i'm going for a justified revenge and a four nil to the arsenal and lee is back with a bang we need a big win and we need to continue pushing on in the league because of course Right now, we are a little bit off the pace. We can go back within three points of Chelsea with with a win, but Liverpool are fifth in the table. Um, they lost their last game. They're not in the best of form. They've only won two of their last five games. So hopefully, uh, Arsenal can get the result. And uh, you know, I think we've got we've shown our consistency uh, recently as well. But we're getting back to winning ways. Um, we've won four of our last five. So yeah, we've got to be happy with that and got to try and continue pushing to chase a Chelsea side that again. A very, very good. Man City in excellent form also won all five of their last games. So, yeah, there you go. Um, let's go to uh, Abrecht says, Martinez contract runs until 2026. No prolongation. Prolongation? Is that a word that you've just made up? Prolongation. <laughs> I love it. I, I love a TGTism, but uh, prolongation certainly uh is is definitely not a word but we're going to treat it as one so now every contract renewal for your benefit um is now going to be called albrecht a prolongation i need to check if that's a word prolongation oh my goodness it's a word it's actually right prolongate extension of the duration of something the position is advertised for two years but a prolongation is possible albrecht my friend you are educating me it's definitely a word. Goodness me, that's brilliant. That is absolutely amazing. I love learning new, what's, what's it? Is it lexicography? Study of words? You've taught me something, Albrecht, today. And I apologize for my absolute disparagement of your use of the English language because that was terrible. Thank you for educating me. Prolongation. Amazing. I've, I've learned something new. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we got a new TGTism there, but we don't. It's actually a word. Incredible. I love it. Oh, absolute apologies to you, Albrecht, for that. That was great. Uh, Darren says, Tom, are you planning a, a call-in show next week? Yes, I am. We're going to be doing a call-in show uh, all around Arteta and, and whether or not we think it's right that he gets extended. So that's going to be happening next week. Uh, so I look forward to that. And uh, there you go. Uh, Jason, still in the chat box. I'm, again, the link is there, Jason. You've not shown up. I'm really looking forward to speaking to you. You're more than welcome to hop on, but you've only got three more minutes to do so. The link was there. I don't know why you've not decided to join us, um, but you've not decided to join in. You are more than welcome, my friend, to come on the show. So thank you so much for your comments and for the help in the algorithm in some ways, I guess. But uh, so far, you've not shown up. You've only scampered away. Uh, scared a little bit. Uh, GWL3 says, it seems like Vlahovic has hit some form recently. What are your thoughts on him? Uh, we have to, uh, we have the most touches in the opposition box that any team in the Premier League. His presence in the box could benefit us. Uh, Vlahovic, of course, is one of those players that is a bit up and down, isn't he? He's, a, he's, he's not shown enough consistency for me to go, yeah, we absolutely need to throw a hundred million on this guy. Um, and I'm not sure if he's ever going to be that player. But he has found a purple patch of form again for Juve. I have no idea why they would ever sell him. I don't think Juve need to sell him. I don't think they would be keen on selling him as they try to fight their way back after, of course, the points deduction of last season. It's very difficult to ever see that, um, that deal ever happening. So... I don't think it's going to happen, Vlahovic, despite all the talk, despite all the potential of it happening. Yeah, I, I don't see it happening. Um, but we'll keep fingers crossed, I guess. And maybe one day Vlahovic will end up, but it's difficult to, to ever see it happening. Uh, Dino says, love your show, Tom, from Melbourne, Australia. Thanks, Dino. Very kind of you indeed. Thank you, Jürgen. Great show as ever, Tom. Thank you for the kind words. Marcus says, so no traitors for a while, Tom, but did you want Harry's autograph? No spoilers, people, for those that haven't seen it yet. I'm giving you, if you've not seen the final of uh, traitors yet, here is your spoiler warning. Click off the video. I think I've given you enough time. And there we go. Yes, I was so close to getting it right. I said Jazz and Molly would win. I thought that Molly might, might vote for Harry. She did and then changed her mind. And, and yeah, I was so close. So close to getting the prediction right. But uh, it was a brilliant series. Amazing. And I can't wait to see it again next year. Um, 
Front Yard says, hey, Tom, I don't know if someone asked you this already, uh, a question, but with the supposed exodus, who would you take um, in terms of their team from, I mean, who would I take from their team? Who? Exodus from who? What, Liverpool? You'd have to tell me, Front Yard, you've not told me the team. <laughs> he just said, of the exodus, who would I take? But I don't really know. I don't really know. Uh, Albert uh, says, good morning to you, Tom. Look forward to having you on my channel for The Breakfast Show. Yes, uh, do go over to Albert JDV at nine o'clock. I'm going to be joining Albert for The Breakfast Show. Um, you've got to respect people doing a show in the morning. Um, so there you go. Uh, and uh, Front Yard says Liverpool. Yes. I don't think there'll be an exodus, to be honest. Um, I don't think there will be an exodus at all from Liverpool. I think the players will stay. Um, I could be wrong, but I think they will stay at Liverpool. So I don't think there will be one, mate. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not expecting Arsenal to be able to, you know, jump on the potential sales of, of players. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, right. Uh, it's a shame. It got so far and then Jason started getting abusive in the comments. It, I I have to end the show on this. Um, I always find that the Arteta debate, the Arsenal debate, the Edu debate is something in which generates a great debate and discussion sometimes. I have to ask the question, though. I have to ask the question, why, along this spectrum of whether you are keen on Arteta staying to the other end of the spectrum, which is um, wanting him gone, why is it that one end of the spectrum, which is tending to be the Arteta outside of things, or the Edu out, or the Arsenal critics, why does it tend to be that the criticism or the outside of things tends to be the most abusive? I know you can have po uh, toxic positivity. I nearly called it toxic to toxicity then. I know you can have uh, toxic positivity. I get that. But why is it that along this kind of spectrum of views, that at the end of which there is criticism and wanting the man gone, that we find there to be the most abuse? That's the question I'm going to leave you with. I'm going to leave you with that to potentially speculate about that in the comment section as well. But I do find that the the end of the line in which it is the most kind of wanting Arteta to move on tends to be filled with the most higher proportion of abusive people. I'm going to leave you with that question. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate your time as always. Do tune into the next show, which of course will be tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. We'll have a roundup, of course, the Liverpool game against Arsenal, of course, as well. Uh, hoping to get a big, big win in the WSL today. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. your Sunday. Uh, a massive, massive shout out, of course, to our, our birthdays in the chat box as well. Fuad and to Omar, of course. I hope you have a fantastic day. And uh, we will speak to you again very soon. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay happy. Stay respectful. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>